Declan. So this application is regarding exterior repair of brick and masonry, the chimney, the roof, gutters, stair, porches, fire escape, and removal of the handrail from the rear steps per the city code violation notice. Uh, part of the work has been completed, including the balcony, porch, and stair work. So the balcony baluster has been replaced uh, with a similar but alternate baluster design to what was there previously. Um, so staff was looked into the hard copies, but no hard copy records were found to confirm when the previous baluster was installed. However, photos associated with a painting application dating from about 2015 do show the unpainted baluster. Uh, so at the December 22nd business meeting, commissioners requested a clarification on what the plans are to address those code violations and repairs, and also about when the previous baluster was originally approved. So staff recommends approval of the application uh, with the condition that the baluster should be consistent with the general architectural style, depending on when it was approved. And then this is based on standards for alteration, specifically number six. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Graff, anything else to add? No, as you can see, we've tried to match the exact same style. Um, they started the work before uh, approval was granted or a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, we wish to complete the work and make sure that it is safe for our tenants. Thank you. Uh, questions, comments, permission? This is this is Ned Thiel. I'm I'm looking at the list of violations, and we're only talking about the balustrade. Is that right? And we're not talking about all the other work that needs to be done and what the possible solution should be. Jacqueline, can you confirm? The only thing before the commission, to the best of my knowledge, is the baluster today. The others we've been working with the city to get fulfilled. I have to tell you, I was not the original applicant. Bill Irwin, who put this in, died two weeks ago. So I'm kind of behind. Yeah, so the application only included the work that has been started. It was just at the business meeting that commissioners uh, requested just further details about the general plan for the property. So what about the balustrades going down the stairs? To the best of our knowledge, they were never there. It seems to me that it's a code issue. Well, I would say, Ned, that if it, the code issue is a code issue, um, if it needs to have something done to it, then we can submit it to us. But as it is, if we're looking at the work that needs to be done here, work that's been underway already, I think we can look at that specifically. Any future work that needs to be done, we have to be another application if it's not included here. Would you agree to that? So we're going to approve two, three sections of balustrade, that's it? I think we're approving the balustrade that existed previously and they're replacing it with uh, a new balustrade so it's kind of a replacing what was there previously oh, i think you're muted ned yeah thank you so i'm looking at the picture right there that not that one that's the original right that's the original we got the stuff up top and there's a piece down the bottom right so there's a picture of a new balustrade in those locations. That's all we're approving. I just want to make sure that we're not proving something that we're not looking at. I think page seven is what we're approving. Okay. It's just, it's just the guard, right? I believe the only completed work includes the balcony, porch, and stair. I would say that's the only, that's all we have information on this application. Nothing else has been really submitted to us content wise. 
the yeah, applicant is in, correct? Right. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not going to say how much I think it matters, though I think it matters. What's been put back up there is not a replacement in kind. And I think we at very least need to acknowledge that. I don't, I'm, I don't know whether it meets code or not, but whatever, whatever, whether or not it meets code, it's not what was there. I think that's a fair comment. It looks like it's trying to be similar, but doesn't quite. It, it looks like they used, and you can't, it's it's kind of tough to tell. It looks like they used the same pieces. They just assembled it differently, thinking that they didn't need to have as high a density of rails um, as was in the in the previous design. I can't tell whether you know what's up here passes a four inch sphere test or not. Nor, as we've already said, nor is it our purview to determine whether something meets code. But just from a visual perspective, what, if it's right or wrong, I just think we need to acknowledge that it's not what was there. I think that's fair from, a, from an architectural standpoint, is what is up there now, the new work, it, it, it deviates from what was there before. Is it acceptable in the manner that it is? Would we want to put back what was there before, <clears throat> or is this acceptable as it's? I think that's for the commission. I'd say normally we would have approved just a simple square baluster uh, across there if, if it was going to be a totally new, not a replacement in kind, which this is not. And yeah, Jay, I didn't realize that you're right. It does look like they just took the original pieces and rather than butt them up against each other, just spaced them out. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, I'm not taking exception to what you said, but we don't know what was there originally. It, it may have been a cutout railing like this. We have no, we have no evidence one way or the other on that. You're absolutely right in that that typically barring any evidence or or you know barring a different design we would typically go after a really simple you know mm -hmm. inch and a half square ballast or four you know four, five inches on center or whatever to meet the requirements of code I, and I, and i'm not saying that this is bad or good i'm just saying that that we we better look at it in terms of its acceptability in uh, you know, if it was acceptable then, and we're going on the principle of, yeah, it's replacement in kind, they're using, you know, they're using the same design as what was there before, then we should be doing that. And we shouldn't be allowing a, a different design to go in there that would not, you know, if they want to apply for, for a new design, then we need to be reviewing this in terms of a new design. I'm just saying. Can we ask the owner if he knows if that's uh, how the balustrade is going up? Is it just pieces of the original that are being spaced out or is it all new? They are pieces of the original that were not, uh, that were usable. If, are you asking, should we go back to the original spacing? No, I was just curious, like where where the pieces came from. They did come from that handrail. And why why were they not reinstalled in the same manner in which they had been previously installed? Several of them were damaged, and we could not find anything that would match. So they're salvaging what was salvageable <clears throat> and then trying to reinstall it in a, in a manner to reuse it. 
as you can see from the pictures, there was significant um, dry rot that had occurred and it was to be a like for like um, replacement. I mean, I'd be most most interested in hearing from Teresa and from Ned, you know, what what their architectural perspective on this is and historic, whether it's, you know, is this close enough to pass the sniff test of replacement in kind, or has this been modified to such a degree that we're really talking about something new here? And if it's something new, is this a, an acceptable design? You you gonna take a stab at that first, Teresa? Well, I have to tell you, the first time I saw this, it, I was reminded of the uh, monkey wrench baluster at the Woodward Opera House. That's what we've been calling it. <laughs> so, I know there have been like flat cutout like balusters that have been done in the nineteenth century. And I would agree with that. I'm thinking some of the other porches in the village that are. Or even more recent than this that don't necessarily have square balustrades on it. I, you know, it's, it is a new design to me, um, but I, I don't find it inappropriate. What I do find is that if and when the code requires you to extend this guard down the stairs, you're going to have to copy this and make it match. I mean, that's what I wanted to hear. And given, given what we're being asked to approve now, I think that that answers it to my satisfaction. I think that Ned's point is spot on, though, that, you know, don't come back with a bunch of square, you know, square pickets on the stair, you know, on the landing and on the staircase if code requires it. It's going to have to be, you know, the, the design is going to have to be of a piece. Jay, and that's exactly my concern is that oh, we're not yeah. we're not we're not seeing all of this. We're just seeing a piece, but you're setting a precedence for what's going to be approved later. I think that's something that the applicant needs to acknowledge, I would assume. Or I mean, more particularly, I think it's something that needs to be in, in the motion so that it's clear that that this is a uh, a template for other you know, for other pieces that uh, need to be developed, if they need to be developed to complete uh, guards at the site. For for the purpose of the applicant to make sure they can address their code order, um, would there be any objection from the commission that if they came back and they needed to um, put the balustrades on the stairs to meet that portion of the code, and they decided to at that point redo the balustrade to be a more simple design, would there be any heartbreak of taking off what they've just done and, and replacing it later if that, that came down to it? I think at that point, it just becomes a moot point. If they're going to extend it down the stairs, they either replicate what's here or they got to do a whole new design for everything. Yeah, and, and I, agree. Yeah, I agree. that That's exactly right. They, if they want to come back with a new appropriate design for the whole thing later, that's fine too. I think the work is done, so we can approve what's there as is, it sounds like, is, is appropriate. Uh, so they can at least get that checked off their return order issue. Deal with the rest as it comes. Mr. Graff, any, any questions on what we're kind of discussing right now? No, I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. All right, so Jacqueline, do we need to take any action on um, the other exterior repairs? I'm assuming no, as we've heard. Nothing on the on the brick, the chimney, the roof, the gutters, all that stuff. No, I think that should come in as a separate application when they're ready. Okay. And it may be something that could be staff to approve. It just depends. Okay. All right, if there's no other questions, we have a motion on this. 
I move on application number two, GB-21-01-016217 East Livingston Avenue to approve the application as submitted with the provision that if uh, the baluster needs to be extended on the landing and down the stairs, that it will have to match what's installed now, or they will have to uh, uninstall what's installed now and redo the whole thing to match. Hey, Carissa, can you make a, a modification of that, that we're approving only three sections of a guardrail? And that what we're approving right now are just the three sections shown in the photographs, and that's it. Second. Any questions on the motion? I will take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it and motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, Jacqueline, on, on that um, file, if you'll make a note, uh, if you go to Google Street View, um, they got some pretty good shots of that uh, all the way back to 2007. 07 is a little blurry, but 09 clean. Oh, great. Thank you. Yep. Right, uh, Item number three, GV-21-01-017-225-227 Thurman Avenue. We have, what was it, Dory Mayer on the call? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Dory Mayer. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Chris, this application involves the removal of a walnut tree on the property, which was formerly located in the middle of a parking area and fence. As the walnuts were falling from the tree, resulting in dents to vehicles and broken windshields, and branches of the tree were encroaching on several properties and roofs and entangling lines. The applicant notes an arborist was consulted about trimming the tree back, but informed the applicant that this could result in the death of the tree that would then require removal anyway. Uh, so commissioners at the December 22nd business meeting requested a copy of the code notice and the applicant has provided a copy of that. The commissioners also requested clarification to better understand the decision to remove the tree at the present time at the meeting. Uh, so staff recommends the approval of the application with the condition that a new similar uh, tree is planted within the general vicinity of the former tree uh, for the purpose of to retain tree coverage in the village. And that is based on the German village guidelines uh, in particular page 30, which talks about the character, visual appeal, and economic value of the village. Ms. Meyer, anything to add? Um, I would just like to ask if you all had a chance to read the letters that I submitted from the current tenants of the area. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We had some, uh, some background noise. Um, current and past tenants of the area has submitted letters describing um, physical damage to their vehicles, to their property, uh, physical damage or harm to themselves, injuries, um, the fact that they had trouble with the power lines. Uh, one tenant was even so fearful when storms came through that they would move their children out of the back bedrooms into the front because they were afraid of the potential um, there also are no other trees really in those parking areas back there at this time. And um, I'm willing to plant another tree. I just have some concerns that in a few years it might be growing back up into all these wires and we might have a similar situation. I also don't know if there's any kind of drainage ditches or anything that run in that area because it is just a small backyard area or what potential root problems could be. One of the letters does talk about how they have already suffered problems with the roots from the tree that was taken down, damaging um, their brick area and their patio area. Um, and I'm not even sure if anything would really grow for a few years since um, that walnut tree was pretty acidic for the area back there. Even grass didn't grow very well. But if you would read these letters, I think you can see um, 
that this is more than just a nuisance tree. It really was becoming a dangerous tree for the area there. Yeah, all, all those letters were included in the application packet. We're going to go see her on the record. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Hey, I'll jump in here. I mean, the tree has been there for how long? It was a known condition to all these people coming there. Um, and all of a sudden, the decision without approval is made to take it down. I, I don't I don't see approving this at all, even for a replacement. Well, on some of the letters, too, they state that it's gotten worse over the past five years. Um, I really wasn't even aware of all the problems that people were having back there. In addition to the walnuts, um, residents were having trouble with squirrels and bird feces. Um, they were not able to use their parking areas, which in that area is a prime thing to have some parking because on-street parking is, you know, hard to come by. Uh, one of the residents even said that since she works out of town a lot, she had to sometimes park two blocks away, carrying thousands of dollars worth of equipment um, in the middle of the night to get home. Um, also, the, the sanitary conditions with all the squirrel feces and uh, the bird feces out there, people were not able to enjoy their outdoor space in the backyard. I was not aware that I had to uh, apply for an appropriate certificate or I would have done so. So that is my fault, but um, I think if you look at these letters, you'll see that this tree over the past few years has even gotten more dangerous and the decision was to take it down before someone really got seriously hurt or injured or um, the building structures were damaged by a fallen limb. I think that may have warranted some trimming back of the tree, but I don't think that warrants taking the whole thing down. I did talk to an arborist and I talked to them about trimming it. Um, they said they could, but more than likely if they trimmed the tree back, it would cause the tree to die. And then I would have a dead tree sitting back there that would have to be removed anyhow. I think it's unfortunate we don't have that documentation. Any other questions, comments from the commission? <clears throat> Commissioner McCoy, anything on your end? No, I mean, I, I understand that a black that does drop um, large fruit, but this was a significant tree in the neighborhood. Um, it was a significant amount of tree cover. And so um, a tree, tree should be replaced, definitely. And there are a number of appropriate trees. A tree that would be chosen would have to be one that could deal with um, the tannic acid in the soil from the black walnut. So I agree we need to insist on the tree replacement here. This was a significant tree. We're losing trees all the time in German village. Um, the prospect of squirrels and birds in the tree doesn't seem to be a reason to cut down all the trees. Yeah, I agree. And typically in many communities, if you take down a mature tree, you have to replace the caliper inches so that a tree of this statue means you're replacing four or five trees so that the caliper inches add up. We don't actually have that as an ordinance, to my knowledge, but. So do we have, <clears throat> excuse me, so from the commission, uh, if we vote on this, it could be voted on with the uh, condition of a tree replacement. 
um, or the applicant could amend their application to include a tree. Uh, I'm not sure for the applicant's sake, I'm not sure you're going to get uh, the majority of the commission to approve without having a tree replacement of some kind. Um, so the question to the applicant is, would you like to amend your application to include a tree replacement or do you want us to vote on it as is with no tree replacement? I will do a tree replacement. I just have one question. Do I have a time that I can do that? Because I don't think right now is the best time to be planting trees. Yeah, we're, we're not expecting to go out there and plant one tomorrow. <laughs> You've got time to do that. Just work with staff. Uh, they can help you um, talk with uh, the proper folks to make sure that get that happens. With uh, commission? Uh, with Jacqueline, I think you'd be the point of contact for that, correct? Yes, and typically the applications, you have a time frame of a year, so you wouldn't need to uh, replant in the winter. So I'll get you next year, 2021. Say that again, please. Sorry, a little background noise. Are there any other specifications for the replacement? Uh, Commissioner McCoy, if you, you want to chime in there, but I think pretty much it's a, a tree um, that will meet the soil conditions. Um, location of the tree, I think, is kind of up to the applicant where it wants to be on the property. Um, but uh, a shade tree is really the, the, the critical piece there for it. I don't want anything to drop anything other than leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So the applicant... Uh, to say that it would like to amend their application to include a replacement tree. Is there a motion from the commission? I, I've got a quick question for uh, Commissioner McCoy, who I guess I would like to make this motion. Um, it, it, can can you state that uh, in in some you know in in uh, in terms that are descriptive and. Uh, you know, would meet kind of the legal requirements of, of understanding about what type of tree should go back. Um, yes, I think it should it should be replaced with a shade tree um, that would be compatible with the area, a shade tree that um, conforms with the city of Columbus approved tree list that's provided by the urban forester. And it should be at least two and a half inch caliber so that you're putting a, a decent sized tree in. Can you say that again? Urban Forester, did you say? Yeah, the Columbus Urban Forester, there's an approved list. Well, it, I don't know if it's, it's the, the list may be the list of trees which you cannot plant, but there is a list and um, we do want something that would be a shade tree. Type. And the other condition was a two inch caliber. Is that what you said? I would say two and a half to three inch caliper. C-A-L-I-P-E-R, which is the measurement of the trunk. Right. And I would, I would also say it should be a tree that would be um, that would tolerate the soil conditions left by the black walnut. The Commissioner of Corps would like to make the motion. Uh, let's see, item number number three, GV twenty one zero one zero one seven, application for approval of tree removal. Um, the commission, I'd like to recommend that the commission approve this removal with the added information that it should be replaced with a shade tree of two and a half to three inch caliper that will tolerate the existing soil conditions left by the um, black walnut. And I think that's it. Is there a second? Is there a second for the commission? Se second. There we go. Any questions on the motion? I'll take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. 
No. Mr. Durst? Aye. Mr. Thiel? No. Mr. Ferriel? Aye. Mr. McCoy? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Uh, agenda item number four, GV-20-11-024-1054-1054. Pearl Street. We have an applicant for 1054 Pearl Street. With the Grand Canal Properties LLC or Daniel Newman. All right. Put that one on the back burner. Uh, Jacqueline, item five has been tabled, correct? Yes, that's correct. The applicant requested it be tabled for the time being. Okay. We'll move on to item number six, which is GV 21801 018 806 South 3rd Street. We have uh, Jamie Sanders. Yes, I'm here. All right. Can you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Jamie Sanders. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. So this application is proposing to replace the existing asphalt shingle roof uh, with GAS Royal Sovereign and charcoal. The difference being uh, the charcoal is color itself is not on the approved shingles list, uh, but the manufacturer and style is on the approved shingles list. Uh, so staff would like to note that the approved shingles list was established based on the historic use of roofing materials in Columbus, specifically the types, colors, and shapes of the slate. And while no asphalt shingle exactly mimics the size, color, and texture of slate, those on the current list are the closest that we have found or have been presented with to this point. Uh, so while the shape of the GF Royal Sovereign Standard 3-Tab asphalt shingle is appropriate, staff does not necessarily support the charcoal color for this contributing 19th century building. So staff does recommend uh, approving the replacing of the roof, but doing so with the color from the approved uh, shingles list in addition to the manufacturer and style. All right, Ms. Sanders, anything else to add? No. All right. Just the homeowner. Questions, comments from the commission? I've got a question. Um, the, the first one is, uh, do we know whether the charcoal existed when the um, list was put together? And the second question is, what are the approved colors from uh, of the Royal Sovereign? Actually have that list. I think in the materials we have, the both um, a showing of the color of the charcoal and then the color of the one from the approved shingles list. We can maybe scroll down one. There you go. So nickel gray is the color uh, for that manufacturer and type. Sorry, that's the only color that's approved for, for that material. I believe so. Some of them have yes. more than one, but I think that one just has the nickel gray. The only ones with multiple, uh, the GAF slate line has two, and the GAF, GAF true slate has two. But the so, the main, so the major difference between the two is the charcoal is just a lot darker. Correct. That's correct. Of the other um, GAF products, are either of the colors that are approved of for the, the other product um, in the same color line as the uh, applicant's requested color? Not that I know of. And I guess where I was going, I was going back to the, to the notion of the, the my first question, and that is, you know, is part of the reason that it's not on the approved list the fact that it didn't exist back when the approved list was done, and if the uh, some of the other products uh, this color did exist, is it reasonable for us to infer that it should be approved? Is 
Sounds like the answer to my question is no, but I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure there. I think, I think it straight up comes down to, does the commission believe that the charcoal color is acceptable? So yes or no, up or down, go to think. So, uh, Pen, or I would say that unless the applicant wants to amend the application, we'll vote on it as is, has been submitted. Um, I, that would be up to the homeowner, so I would have to ask them to amend it so I can let them know it will be approved as we have it. So your, your options here, just to make sure it's a streamlined view as possible, Ms. Sanders, is if, if we vote on as, as is and deny it, then it'll be a brand new application to come back for to get anything else approved. Uh, if you amend it now at the table to be the nickel gray, we can vote on it and approve it. And the homeowner has an approval they can proceed forward with, um, and or they can come back and they can come back and try to get charcoal again if they want to have charcoal. I'm trying to make sure that they have something they can move forward with and not be held up by it. Understood. Okay, I I will amend the application then, please. Okay. Is there a motion? There is, Mr. Chairman, on, uh, oh boy, sorry, agenda item number six, application GV 2101-018, um, to approve the application as amended by the applicant for the use of uh, Nickel Gray Royal Sovereign. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. And Ms. Sanders, please pass on to your applicant or to your owner that uh, we're trying to get them something they can move forward with. And if they want to come back and submit again for the charcoal, they can. We just know that if we vote it down now, they have to come back again anyway for the correct color. So I, just I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Not a problem. All right, we'll move on to item seven, GV-21-01-019-1085, South 4th Street. Looking for a Joshua Wood or Brian House. Uh, Josh Wood here. All right, I heard your voice. Um, looking for your face. Oh. face. Please raise your right hand, Mr. Wood. <coughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record. Joshua Wood. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application involves placing a baller next to the gas meter, as well as building cement steps steps down to the alley from the back gate and removing the broken area of concrete where the new steps will be located. Um, the step outline in wood has been put in place and the removal of non-historic concrete planter was previously staff approved over to the side. And in response to commissioner feedback at the December 22nd business meeting, the applicant has submitted additional information regarding the proposed bollard. The staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to the issuance of our certificate. All right. Um, applicant, have anything else to add? I don't. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? I think the, the question that had been raised um, at the at the meeting or at the business meeting was why a bollard if this is really out of the right of way, you know, where's where's the what are you trying to protect? Uh, the gas. Well, uh, I was hoping that. that. Pardon. I understand that, that you want to protect the gas meter. I'm just trying to figure out why the gas meter that's not in the public right of way needs protection. Imagine that at some point a car would pull in there. They, they park all along the alley there, and his hope is that a car will park there as well. And well, I mean, there's, I, I'm meter. fairly certain there's no way that that's a legal parking spot. That's no. All I know is that I was asked to put in a baller.
And uh, I'll make the comment that I, we're starting to see ballers kind of sporadically around the village. I've seen several of them just out walking around, whether they're improved or not, different conversation, but I have seen some around. I know that the, the gas company is putting in ballers in a lot of locations where they're replacing um, gas meters with medium pressure gas, uh, the medium pressure gas line. Um, clearly, this is not. I mean, I, I guess maybe they would put one. Are they? Maybe they would put one in here, if so desired. <clears throat> um, the other issue with bollards, of course, is the color. And I mean, we've we've not seen uh, with a couple of really a couple of exceptions, bright yellow bollards. So I'm, I'm happy to have it painted. It's not All right. The, the last thing is that this is a bolt down bollard. And when you bolt down a bollard, the, it, it's only as solid as the thing you're bolting it into. And so those it looks like you're going to have much to bolt into those, uh, the four squares of concrete that are, um, I, I'm looking at a picture I just took today, which you may not be looking at. Those four squares of concrete are solid concrete. They're under the gas meter. All right. My other, my question would be, um, we're showing a four by 48, a four foot tall bollard. Is there something driving a 48 inch height on this thing? I'm, I'm sorry, is there? Is something driving a four foot height for this bollard? No, no. I, the homeowner just sent me this and said, do you think I could show them this? And I said, it's bolt down. So that means that it could, it's not permanent. It could go away if it needs to go away. So yes, but if there's a shorter one, I can certainly investigate um, a 36. I, yeah, I'd say I've, I've seen 36s more often than not around. The, the four foot tend to get pretty, pretty large and, and visually obtrusive. Uh, if we can minimize as much as we can, now we don't get too short because then you invite you introduce different issues right but i would say that the preferred method of protecting is, is either some kind of landscaping um maybe a, a, a curb type of thing in that location as opposed to a bollard but that, that's my personal preference i think there's other ways to achieve protection um if a car is going to get all the way over there they're going to they're going to jump a curb they're going to be ramming a bollard in my opinion um Repeat that about a curb. So you could potentially do some some landscaping there, um, doing some kind of curb, uh, a planting around that um, gas meter to make kind of a, a planting bed that would be a little bit raised, um, which would prevent a car from rolling up onto it. Uh, I think if a car is going to come in at a high enough speed to ramp into a garden, I think it's going to be coming at a high speed to mm -hmm. ramp through a baller. I, I don't think that's really the issue at that location because you can have stairs on one side. And you have a wall. I, can, I, the I can certainly mention that to the homeowner. When when I first approached staff about all of this, it was that this was an older concrete sidewalk and that the commission would most likely want to see it kept intact. So adding a curb to that or building, removing enough concrete to allow for a planting bed there would certainly not keep that intact. But I'm not saying I'm opposed to that. Um, I did just find that there's, a, of course, a 36 inch bolt down bollard as well that the homeowner just didn't send me in the link. So that's that's not a for no one's married to forty eight inches. I think for the commission, are you, are you, is there any heartache over a, a thirty six inch smaller bollard in that location? And if it's a color, what co I mean, do you just a color from the house? Like if just if if yellow is objectionable. I would, I would go black if it were me. Um, I would suggest black. I have seen both black and um, stainless steel around, and I think the black seems to be more consistent with the neighborhood. Happy to paint it black. Yeah, the, the stainless steel ones make me cringe every time I see them. Yeah. Can I... You, that you're amending the application to have a, a 36 inch bollard as yeah. You said. yeah yeah all right 
No further comments from the commission? Uh, this is Commissioner Durst. I guess I would say I'm not unopposed if they want to remove the concrete and put in something else besides the bollard. In person. Yeah, likewise. Well, barring the applicant from asking for that, is there a motion on the application as amended? Um, no, uh, or, sorry, Mr. Chair. On item 2101019, 85 South 4th Street. I would move to approve the application uh, with the provision that the baller be six inches and painted black. Second. Right. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Beal. Aye. Commissioner Fairview. Aye. Aye. Jeff. There you go. Commissioner Aye. McCoy. Aye. And chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank, very you. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item eight, GV 21 01 020 777 South 5th Street. We're looking for uh, an applicant for 777 South 5th Street. Third call for an applicant for 777 South 5th Street. Yep, I'm here. There we go. I heard your voice. I see your face. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yep. yep. And please state your name for the record. Kyle Myers. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Jacqueline. Okay, this application had replaced an existing fence uh, with 45 feet of six foot rail cedar custom solid privacy fence. And they would also like to add a one to four foot scalloped walk gate. Uh, the fence was initially staff approved and had been installed. However, after installation, uh, it was found that the west side of the fence currently rises above the north side due to grading. So at the December 22nd business meeting, the commissioners noted that in similar cases, a solution of stepping back the fence so that the first section is at the lower elevation with the fence then stepping up at the first post back is typically uh, required and recommended. And the applicant has communicated that they are amenable to this solution. All right. I, I would like to add that the scallop fence has been removed from that. Uh, the homeowner did not like it, so we went back and rebuilt it, and the gate now matches the rest of the fence. It's a flat top gate. Yes. Okay. Any questions, comments from the commission? So I have a picture of the inside of the fence from prior to us replacing it. And the first section is tapered down to meet the front of the street instead of stair steps. Um, we are not opposed to either, whichever the commission decides, either stair step or tapering it. Austin, the commission, anybody have a preference stair step versus tapered? I mean, I, my preference is to stair step it, but I, it's not, not an incredibly strong preference. Per personally, I think it would look a lot better stair step than it did tapered, but that's just me. We can no, no, it's me too. Can't go for it. <laughs> it's also me. All right, so it sounds like stair step is a preference. Um, there's no further questions. Is there an application on the application as amended for a flat top walk gate, not scalloped, uh, and the fence to be stair stepped? Sure, Mr. Chairman. On sorry, Let's scroll here a little bit. Agenda item number eight, application GV twenty one oh one oh two oh. Um, to approve as submitted to stair step the first section 
approximately eight foot section of fence down to the same level as the top of the fence along the alley. Sorry, is it street or alley at that point? Public way. Public way, thank you. No problem. And a flat top gate. And a flat top gate. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take your vote. Commission Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Farrell. Jeff, you muted. Commissioner Farrell, you're on mute. Do you have a vote? Still on mute. Find it. It escaped from my view. Aye. There we go. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes ayes well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 9, GV-21-021-021, 847 Mohawk Street. We have Mr. Hugus or Mr. Colvin. Hugus here. Uh, I see Mr. Hugus. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. William Hugus. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is to replace the existing slate roof with new slate to match. That would be Vermont and gray slate, uh, 12 by 20 inches with dog ear corners and six inch half round copper gutters and five inch round copper downspouts with copper ridge rolls and drips. Uh, so while the slate does appear to be in good condition, the applicant notes that many repairs have been done to the roof, which have been ongoing and costly. And at the December 22nd business meeting, the commissioners requested some details or specs about the proposed replacement slate and asked about the approximate percentage of slate that has uh, required replacement. Uh, so staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff uh, on the condition that the original historic slate is determined to need replacement uh, prior to replacing with new. All right, Mr. Hugus, anything else to add? Uh, all I would add is uh, that this shouldn't, this should be a no brainer. I've, historically, we have been struggling with losing slate roofs. This client wants to set it up for the next 100 plus years. Uh, already done the single cottage next door. Uh, he just wants to get it finished. It's, it's in decent shape, but it takes twice a year replacing slates and it's eventually going to get replaced um, over a long period of time. And we would rather be proactive than wait for somebody that buys this house five or six years from now, which I'm guessing would be the case. Um, they may not want to spring the, the 50,000 for the slate and want to do asphalt shingles. And I, that's, just not, this is a cottage. It's very important for the visual texture. I, I think it ought to be just a no brainer. That's all. I have a motion unless anybody else has something to say. I'm ready to second it. <laughs> Agenda item num not, number nine, GV 21010218847 Mohawk to approve as submitted. Second. We lost our fearless leader. <laughs> The darn mute button. All right, take the vote. I hate that mute button. We got, uh, we got a motion. We got a second. Questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Uh, motion passes. And Thank you. Let's pass on to your applicant that uh, 
We appreciate the uh, the saving of the slate. Here, here. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on to item number 10, uh, GV-21-01-022, 247 Lansing Street. Looking for Walter or Jane Cox or another applicant. I see Mr. Cox on the list. Mr. Cox, are you there? See you. But you're muted still. Mr. Cox? Shoot a message real quick. Mr. Cox, you there with your audio? See your mouth moving, but there's no audio coming through, sir. Mr. Cox, you want to try hopping out and hopping back in, see if we can get your audio back? Uh, it might be easier also to to call into the meeting and then he can we can see his video but he can also use his his phone to for audio Give Mr. Cox a minute here, see if we can get uh, called in by a phone. <laughs> Steph, you want to make sure you give Mr. Cox the uh, phone number to call in the chat down there, please. I'm searching for just one second. Cool. Hi, I'm just trying to test my my uh, sound since I'm next. Yes. Can you hear me? Hear okay, you. great. <laughs> Thanks. I just posted in the uh, you have number two. So Cox, you get the phone number in there? Mr. Chairman, I hate to suggest this, but can we move on and come back to this? I think that's a good suggestion. We'll come back once we miss, get Mr. Cox's uh, audio working again. We'll move forward to item number 11, GV-21-01-023, 262 East Sycamore Street. 
Uh, Mary Deach is here for that. All right, thank you, Ms. Deach. Uh, Jacqueline? Okay, so this uh, application is to install a walk-up window within the existing window opening of the Sycamore restaurant. Uh, the window opening would have a fixed upper sash, a mid sliding wood section, and a black painted fixed tempered light at the base. Existing trim would be retained with a new window to match existing profiles. The exterior door and window trim would also be painted. At the December 22nd business meeting, the commissioners requested clarification on which materials are remaining and which materials are proposed for removal, as well as clarification regarding the drawings, noting some details appear to be off and that no trim is shown. Uh, the commissioners also requested the drawing or rendering to show the appearance of the window and the finished opening and close-up photos of the window in field condition. And the applicant has provided some additional materials that have been included in the application materials. Uh, so staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to approval uh, with the condition that historic building fabric be retained. All right, Ms. Deach, anything else to add? Uh Nope, just uh, again, touch base with our contractors and carpenters and they all feel confident about replacing the, the window with the slider and maintaining all of the existing trim as we're hoping to do. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, this is Ned Thiel. I got a question. When you say you're retaining the trim, what, what historically, what, what are you going to remove? That's my question. The, the glass will be removed uh, of the, the main pane, and then the new frame of the um, sliding window will cover the uh, inner jam trim of the, of the main window, but it will, it will still be there. So if the slider was removed, that existing uh, trim will, will be there to, so to replace to the window. So just to clarify, the only thing that we're taking out is the glass? Correct. Everything else would be additive and be removable. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm a little nervous about whether this is old leaded glass. I don't think it is. It's not. Times I've seen it. Okay. It's not. No. It seemed to be an awfully big pain to be old leaded glass. Right. It, it's not old glass. Okay. I mean, it may be 50 year old glass, but it's okay. not 19th century glass. Right. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, on agenda item number 11, GV 21010123262E Sycamore to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cox, did your audio come back through yet? Yes, I got it on my cell phone. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, we'll go ahead and jump back to GV-21-01-022, 247 Lansing Street. Uh, Mr. Cox, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Walter Cox. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is requesting to replace an existing garage door on a modern garage with new single garage door, and that is due to the narrowness of the alley. So at the December 22nd business meeting, the commissioners noted that the proposed uh, initial composite sample has come before the commission previously and does have a faux wood appearance that is not considered appropriate. The commissioners um, also asked how far set back the garage doors are from the alley and requested details on the dimensions between the garage doors and whether wider doors have been considered. And in response to that commissioner uh, feedback and the questions, the applicant noted that they have an 11 foot wide alley with a nine foot apron to the garage doors and 26 inches to the outside, east and west sides of each door and 32 inches between the two doors. And the applicant has also proposed uh, a, another possible garage door uh, being the Clopay Coachman nine by seven inch door. Um, so staff uh, recommends replacing the garage doors uh, with the doors having a smooth finished and then if it's possible for the two wider doors to be installed uh, versus what the dimensions are now, 
uh, staff recommends that approach, but if this is not feasible, then that the any new single garage door should be trimmed out to give the appearance of two doors. And that is based on the German village guidelines, in particular, the new buildings, garages and outbuildings, number six. Mr. Cox, anything else to add? Uh, yes, uh, we just moved here back in October, so we kind of inherit the situation. Um, when you're backing in, as you can see from the pictures there, when you're back in, it takes about uh, four or five times to pull forward and back and to get back in properly on that side of the garage. The other side, you can't. It's very difficult to get into. Um, when you do get in position to back straight in, uh, you got about two inches. I got about two inches on each mirror. Uh, my mirrors do not fold. Uh, do not fold in to be able to give me some more relief there. Um, nine foot doors were not considered. Um, we just kind of thought that we could put one uh, 18 foot door in there. Uh, it would uh, allow us to enter the garage safely, whether we pull in or back in. And an 18 foot door also, I mean, we plan on being here for a long time, but an 18 foot door would also uh, help either us or the next person to uh, get two. two uh, as it is, I'm not sure nine foot doors uh, would work. Uh, I wouldn't want to experiment, you know, due to the cost of that. Um, that's why I think uh, put an eight one eighteen foot door in there. Uh, the doors that are in there now, they are, um, um, you know, they're eight by sevens. They're um, steel clad with a with a poly, uh, you know, polyurethane uh, middle to them. Um, and, and they have a relatively smooth finish. Is it completely smooth? No, but it, it, it's a smooth, it's a texture that you really can't see. Um, other than that, I guess I'm just asking for your approval to find a door that we can put in here and, and be able to enter the ground. Mr. Questions, comments from the commission? I guess I unmuted myself with the thought of saying something. I'm just not entirely certain what. Um, it, I, clearly, there, there are two related but separate questions here. The, the, the first is, is whether um, the threshold is at for allowing a single garage door. Um, and we've you know, our guidelines are, are fairly clear in terms of requiring two doors. Um, but when when we get down to alleys that are, are narrow, um, uh, with narrow approaches, there have certainly been instances where we've allowed, um, a few instances where we've allowed single doors. The second issue is one of the door itself, and I'm still confused as to exactly what's being proposed here because there there just seem to be a whole bunch of uh, different garage doors that are that are being submitted here, and I'm just I I just don't know exactly what we're being asked. Um, what I do know is that most of what I'm seeing are extremely shallow relief. Um, in terms of their designs, and I know that, and and I will simply say that's something that I've had a significant problem with um, on all of the uh, all the applications that we that we've seen with these shallow relief doors. I don't know whether that's the case with all of them because, as I say, there just seem to be a whole bunch of things that are being thrown at us here. I speak. Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, the, you know, the reason you're getting so much thrown at you, Mr. Panzer, is that we're trying to work with Jacqueline uh, to find a suitable door that meets the uh, German village, you know, requirements, and that's why so many doors. Um, now, I, I, I talk, I've been working with precision garage doors to try to find a solution that, uh, that meets, you know, the German village requirements, and that's why you're seeing so many things being thrown at you as far as the garage door styles go. Um, 
I did speak with her this afternoon, and we, you know, Clay, Clay makes a custom wood door that she's going to check into tomorrow. Um, and also, you know, the next door to us, the Cleope Avante door, which is a uh, sandblasted glass uh, aluminum framed door, has been approved. But I, I don't know about that style of door. Uh, they're putting in a brand new garage next to us, and those are the garage doors that were approved. Uh, so she's going to also look at that tomorrow. But hopefully that answers your question about why you're seeing so many uh, variations to what what we can possibly put in. So you're right. There are two questions here. One is, can we go to an 18-foot door? And then the second question would be to find an appropriate door. Uh, first of all, th thank you for that. That that helps a little bit. That that you know, this is this is part of the hunt. Is why we're we're seeing all of the. Uh, uh, all the game in the field, if you will. Um, right. You know, going going to um, nine foot doors, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to push you in in this direction. Or maybe I guess I am, um, because of the space that you're left between the doors actually gives you more distance between the cars. There's there is maneuvering to be done unquestionably, but one of the nice things is that the um, you know the the jam on the left on the left of the left door and the jam of the right of the right door is actually farther apart with two nine foot doors than it is with a single eighteen foot door. If that makes if that makes sense. Well, that, that current opening is eighteen foot six inches with the two doors. If you take out section. Take out that uh, and put doors in there. You're going to that center beam. You're going to lose so two feet. Is going to lose an eight inch. Being able to put an eight inch beam in that center post, uh, unless we take uh, six inches, you know, going the other direction, east west, you know, to the outside of the garage. Then right. you might have a, a big center piece to it. Now, I guess I'd like to hear from other commissioners in terms of how they feel about a double double door. I, I personally am of the opinion of, of a single wide door at last resort. Um, I, I'm always in favor of, of two separate doors. If there is a single wide door, I believe it needs to be trimmed out to, to have the appearance of two separate doors. Um, I, I will throw out one more door option that just came across the commission recently. Um, the Clope Canyon Ridge Collection Ultra Grain Series. Um, it's a, a steel door uh, with a composite wood overlay, which appears to be uh, non faux grainy, um, which is a good thing. Uh, it's not a, a flush, um, not panelized. It's more of a carriage house style door. Um, but it'd be interesting to see that as, as an option. Um, but yeah, definitely, if, it, if it's going to be a, a single 18 foot, it needs to be trimmed out and have some kind of overlay on top of it, at which case you, you may be moving away from the options that you have in front of you right now. Um, but I, I'd be more, I'd be okay with two nine foots as opposed to a single 18 foot. I guess the question is, would you be okay with the 18 foot? I, I don't think I would, personally. Um, the dimensions that, that I heard, heard, and, um, I heard them quickly, but, uh, what, what were the dimensions of the alley and the apron and the distance on, uh, across the alley as well? I heard them rattled off, but I didn't catch them. 11 foot and nine foot. Is that right? Yes, that's right. That's what I have here. And the vehicle is 17 feet. So the, the alley itself uh, is listed as 11 foot wide, and then the apron is listed as 9 foot wide. I, I mean, going along with what Anthony says, I, I will tell you, it, it has usually been a case where it's when we're under 
20 feet, which is, I think, what the maneuvering requirement, well, I, I, I don't want to go there. I believe it is most often the case where we've gone to a double wide door, to a single double wide door, is when there are less than 20 feet. Um, the, the size of, and, and, and this may sound callous and it really is not intended to because we've got some big cars too. Um, the size of someone's car is, is not really relevant to the discussion of the, the doors that are appropriate uh, and to what should be issued um, as a certificate of appropriateness. I, I, again, I don't mean that to sound callous. It's just for you to know. I mean, when, you, when you're trying to pull in here, I mean, I come down um, and I have to swing into the neighbor's, I have to get real close to my garage door, swing over into my neighbor's apron, back in, and then pull into my, that was a house right across the street from the, from the garage. I have to pull into his driveway and then maneuver back in again, then pull almost to the front of his house to back straight in. Um, and then when I do back straight in, I've only got, you know, like I say, a couple inches on each side of the, of the mirrors. And you're right, it's not, if I had a smaller car, I just, you know, smaller car, it may be better to get in, but I, I just bought this car before we moved here, so I, I, I have. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the, the slippery slope we play is if if you start taking the size of a car into account, then somebody can come in with a an F three fifty extended extended cab, and all of a sudden you're dealing with a twenty five foot long car, and and, and we, it's just one of those things we got to deal with the 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 known criteria here. So I I, 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 I fully appreciate the, the the hardship that you have there from the vehicle that you have, but. So, so Anthony, if 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 it's a single door that's trimmed out to look like two, is that a custom door at that point? I, I'm not sure. I think it, you, you're looking down that path. Yeah, I've never bought an 18 foot wide door uh, myself, so I couldn't tell you. Typically, what they do, from what I've seen, you know, researching this, is that they put a couple door handles to the center. And it makes it look like there's two two doors there. You just don't have a center post, you know, like a like garage door. Well, one one of the things, <laughs> I this is this is semi relevant. One of the things that 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 we really um, never approve. This is kind of for future reference. Are any of the the faux door handles or faux hinges, strap hinges that you see put on? on some of these doors. Um, okay. it, it, it's for, for future reference. I mean, some of the doors that, that you know, some of the elevations that, that we see, and, and I think this is what Mr. Cox is referring to on page seven, page eight, um, and page nine of the, the application, you start seeing doors that are uh, designed to, to mimic multiple panels. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and again, it, it, you know, hinges and handles are not something that that, that we like to see un unless unless you're actually doing barn doors. Um, okay. I, I am curious. Um, there's a there's a on. I remember what? Or I can't tell what page it's on. No, page one. Uh, there is a 19 foot dimension on. Um, Yeah. What's that 19 foot dimension? I thought that when I first measured that, Mr. Penzer, I, I thought it was 19 feet, but since I've re-measured it, there is a nine foot apron and the uh, um, alley is 11 feet. So I, I basically have 20 feet to the to the front of that house. Are you saying that the, the, that the the alley is measured at 11 feet or you're saying that it says it's an 11 foot alley on some city plan no i went out and measured it it's 11 foot okay and uh, the apron the apron is nine so it really is 20 feet yes sir the the reason i asked just so that you know is that that um 
the house across the street would or across the alley would would not be the first house to be built over the property line in German Village. <laughs> Understood. I, so let me I'm, ask this question: if We can make a nine foot door work. Is that acceptable? I'd have to have a builder come out and take a look at it and see if we can make it work. If you could do, I would say if you can get two nine foot doors in there, I think that's fine. I think it's perfectly acceptable. Okay. Let's say if you're going to put one nine in, put two nines in. Uh, I, and I Absolutely. think just based upon the spacing between the doors and spacing on on either side of the doors, it looks like you have the the room to make the the changes to make that happen in that facade of that garage. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I think even even with that, uh, first of all, yes, I agree. Secondly, um, uh, you know, I think that the, the second question here still needs to be uh, answered, and, and that is what what the acceptable um, garage door is. And, and I think that uh, Anthony, you gave a good idea. We know that um, we've seen the the wood doors from Clope, and we've seen the um, the wood overlay doors from CHI. Um, so I think that there are some acceptable alternatives out there, but again, looking for a smooth finish or, or a, a quite smooth finish and, uh, and a, a reveal depth uh, that would be the equivalent, well, basically a three quarter inch reveal depth. And I wanna say the Clope Coachman, which I think was mentioned somewhere in this application, I believe that's been approved in the past. Is that correct, Jacqueline? So from what I remember, it might have, I can't remember if it's the one that was approved for an application by Bill Hugus where it had to be sanded down or if that's a, a separate application or separate type of door. That was a different one. That was 577 Cedar Alley. It was approved for Clopay Coachman, but a different door was, was put in place, I believe. Ah, okay. Clope Coachman, the, the trim application uh, is smooth. Uh, the field panel, if you will, is has a slight dimpling to it, uh, but not an egregious dimpling. Um, that's the Clope Coachman. The Clope Canyon Ridge um, is a composite overlay, which is a lot more smooth, uh, more with almost like a, like strip siding kind of view to it. The CHI uh, has a, a true wood overlay on top of the steel door. Um, the 577 Cedar Alley, that was an overhead door, brand door, uh, and they had faux wood applied, a faux grain wood applied as the trim, and that's what Bill and the team had sanded down to, to get acceptable. But we would not recommend going that route if not, if not uh, necessary. Yeah. So, so Mr. Harkey, you, could say, you said that the Clayope Coachman and the Canyon Ridge are two, two doors that could be acceptable? Yeah, the Coachman's been approved. Um, the Clope Canyon Ridge is a newer one, one we just saw. Um, and then the CHI with the wood overlay is one that's been approved uh, in and out time and time and time again in the village. What's the, the CHI is? Yeah, CHI, I don't have the specific door. Um, it's a CHI with a, a wood overlay. It's a metal panel with a wood overlay on top of it. Then there's always the option of going just a standard old flat panel steel door and then just having a carpenter come and do a wood overlay on top of it is also also a fourth option. Okay. So I'll, I'll do with precision. If we can't work out, I'll look at these two clay pay doors and see if they'll work for us. And um, do once I just, that's what we're going to do to resubmit to Jacqueline and get approval in your next meeting. Yep. I'm not sure how it all works. Yep, just ask Jacqueline. So my recommendation is that we continue the application. That way you stay around top of the stack and you go right up to the beginning of the next meeting. Uh, that work for you? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you. Okay. So a little bit of uh, quick information. So I just went out and took a measurement out my back because um, I've got nine foot doors. Um, I've got a 22 foot uh, between the alley and the apron and a 16 foot car and I can make it but I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be thinking about making that turn into a nine foot door 
uh, with only 20 feet. Well, quick Thank quick you. poll across the commission. Uh, Commissioner Panzer, how do you feel about an 18 foot door? Yay, nay. Um, at a 18 foot door with 20 feet at the alley, I'm still, I think, a nay. Commissioner Durst, 18 foot door, yay, nay. I think I'd be okay with it. Commissioner Thiel, 18 foot door. I'm okay. Commissioner Ferial, 18 foot door. Yeah, I think I'm okay with it. Um, I think we're probably paying more attention to configurations of garage doors and alleys than we maybe ought to, although the the guidelines uh, should control. Uh, Commissioner McCoy, 18 foot door. Nay. All right, so it looks like there's uh, three yays and I'd be a nay, so three yays, three nays. So without Commissioner Foley here, you wouldn't have a passing. So take that into consideration uh, for the next meeting and you can submit as you deem appropriate. Thank you. All right. uh, is there a motion to continue? I moved. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take a vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Mr. Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Farrell. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion is continued. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox. All right, uh, jumping ahead to item 12, GV-21-01-024-180 Thurman Avenue. We have uh, David Watkins, Uli Nemchek, or another applicant. Uh, second call for 180 Thurman Avenue. Third call for applicant for 180 Thurman Avenue. All right, we're on the list to come back to. Uh, moving ahead to item 13, GV-21-01-025, 738-742 Jaeger Street. Uh, looking for Julia Bullock or Mr. Knitter. I'm here. I'm here. All right, if you'll both be speaking, would you both please raise your right hands? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your names for the record. Sorry, Ms. Bullock. A Juliet Bullock. Mr. Knitter. John, John Knitter. Thank you, Mr. Knitter. Thank you. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this application is proposing a new garage to replace a previously existing garage that was removed due to tree damage. Uh, the garage design has been simplified to a rectangular form and removing the back addition. And the new design also includes block materials. Uh, so the prior garage was previously approved for demolition due to the damage uh, with the new garage to be reconstructed utilizing those block materials as, as it is now to match that of the historic garage structure. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, prior to issuance of a certificate. Mr. Bullock, Mr. Kinder, anything to add? Um, I just think uh, when we had originally got this approved, it was kind of based on the design for the repair of the garage and it had a lean to addition in the back. And, and we feel like this design actually more represents um, what the existing garage looked like. Um, my client was also able to find a, a good supplier to match the um, existing block that's on the garage now. So we'll be able to replicate that. Oh, you're muted, Anne. Thanks. Sorry, I'm muted. Questions, comments from the commission? Um, I, first of all, thank you. Um, I I think that the in general the design is has gotten really where we needed to be, where I needed to be. 
Um, I take exception to the garage doors. Um, and I think you probably heard some of the conversation that we had yeah. earlier, but um, yeah. I, I think that that's the only place that I've, I've got an issue. Um, although I can't see what the windows are. I, the windows are the pretty. Lincoln's, the Lincoln casements, yeah, and the yeah. Metro, you know, yeah. those are inside anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, and we're happy to make it an eight panel flat panel door. It's already called out for wood. Any other questions, Council? The question. I guess it's not eight panel, four by four, 16 panel. I would, I would uh, make the comment. Um, uh, are you using wood windows for the sake of wood or just using windows because you want wood? And we have the, the uh, approved non wood window list. We'll make sure that you're aware of those as well. I don't think we're driving you one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> John, I don't know if you have a thought on that. I'd like to go the cheaper route. <laughs> Fair enough. Do what you're going to do there. All right. So as far as the doors go, that seemed to have uh, some conversation points there. Uh, Jay, any comments on the door? Well, I go back to the the design, the door designs that are incorporated in the um, in the guidelines. The paired the paired swing door appearance style rather than just a panelized door okay we could do that i just didn't know because it was concrete block was it was that too dressy of a door for the architecture of the garage I well, I think you want to keep it to one of the very simple, you know, probably just square, tr square trimmed and, you know, cut kind of a, f well, what would it be? Four panel total door, you know, would not, would not be one of the more, one of the dressier ones with, you know, arches and windows and all that sure. crap, but, you know, I'd, I'd still keep it simple, which also helps you in, in terms of, of the door. It, it could be done as a, um, as a slab door with applied trim, uh, you know, wood slab door with applied trim, as opposed to having a buy one of the uh, one of the other options. But yeah, I, I okay. would absolutely keep it simple. Okay, that I think that's fine. Unless John has any objection. No, that's fine. <laughs> right, any other questions, concerns? <laughs> If there are none, is there a motion on the application? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number 13, application GV 21010025738-742 Jaeger Street to approve as submitted with the uh, following um, modification requested by the uh, following amendment uh, requested by the owner to utilize a um, a wood door in the style of uh, what's incorporated in the um, in the guidelines to be submitted to staff. Um, I think the the other thing which is worth pointing out, and I think you started to point it out, Mr. Chair, is that uh, any of the windows from the approved list could be used and could be approved by staff. Um, should they wish to, to alter the current Second. plan? Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Mr. Kinder, it's been a long haul. Thank you very much for sticking <laughs> with it. Sure has. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Next right, on to item. item 14. Is that, uh, GV-21-01-026-1042 Jaeger Street. Looking for Don Highlander. Mr. Highlander, are you there? Let's see. Now can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record. Donald Highlander. Thank you, Mr. Highlander. Jacqueline. Okay, this application includes both a variance recommendation request and exterior alteration. Uh, so the second floor uh, of a detached frame garage would be utilized as a habitable space. Uh, the applicant would like to replace the west exterior double door on the first floor, as well as replace the west and east windows on the second floor, then convert an existing double hun window into an egress window. The applicant would also like to install new skylights on the west roof to meet the lighting code and install an exterior staircase and door on the west side to access the second floor. So in response to commissioner feedback at the December 22nd business meeting regarding clarification on the need to install skylights for lighting code, the applicant has stated uh, the following that all habitable rooms shall have, an, well, they're citing code, so all habitable rooms have an aggregate glazing area of not less than 8% of the floor area of such rooms and natural ventilation shall be through windows, doors, louvers, and other approved openings to the outdoor air and that such openings shall be provided with ready access or shall otherwise be readily controllable by building occupants. It goes on to uh, describe that the minimal openable uh, art to the outdoor shall be 4% of the floor area being ventilated. The applicant states that their floor area is 370 square feet. 8% of that is 29.6 square feet of glazing for lighting the floor area. And that each window currently has 5.9 square feet of glazing, uh, which is 23 square feet. And that they are required to give an additional 6.6 .6 square feet of glazing area to meet that minimum requirement. And they are, note that they also are wanting more natural light into the staircase and living area. So on the second floor plan, the dash green lines are indicating the skylight locations that help those specific areas get additional lighting. And in response to the request for clarification of the measurements on the site plan, the applicant has stated that while they don't see the three foot, three inch dimension on the site plan, they did put a two foot and three and fourth inch and a one foot and three and half inch uh, measurements, which are the distance from the outside of the detached garage to the property line. The applicant has additionally submitted a second floor plan and preliminary comments from zoning in response to the commissioner feedback. So staff recommends approval uh, with any clarifications to be submitted to staff. And that's uh, based on the standards for alteration, specifically number nine and number 12. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Highlander, anything else to add? Um, just that uh, the building, uh, the garage was rebuilt, I think somewhere around uh, 2017 and it was placed on existing footings. So that's why we do not have the three feet on each side of the of the building uh, to the property line. But when we make it a habitable space, we are, we're aware that we'll have to rate the, those two walls, uh, you know, just to meet the building code requirement rate at one hour. Uh, so the, the intent originally was to put some kind of a guest bedroom up on this level. So what they're planning is a guest bedroom uh, with a small kitchenette and a, uh, a bath on that level. To the current uh, building has an interior staircase, but that staircase does not quite meet the residential building code. Uh, so we would have to reconfigure it internally. Uh, the 20 foot is fairly narrow for the garage minus the interior stairs. So it's fairly narrow to try to park uh, any size car in that space. Plus the owner would like to have access to the guest bedroom through the, uh, uh, basically from the exterior so they don't have to enter the garage to go through. So what we're proposing is an ex uh, about a half flight or about three feet eight of height uh, where we would enter into a new door that would match the existing doors and uh, be able to come in at about a half level uh, to an into to the uh, rest of the interior uh, staircase. Uh, so we've already mentioned that it was, uh, it was uh, uh, built on um, uh, the existing fat footing. So uh, we realized that the staircase might have to be three feet away from the property line. It's only about two foot to be there. 
so we might have to um, move the staircase about nine inches or so so that we'd have the three foot clear so that just just in case there's any kind of uh, regulation about making the uh, staircase uh, uh, fire rated in any way. So I think we want to try to match what's there that sort of a, a four pane window look in uh, uh, if you take the double hung windows up and then uh, with the, the glass doors that are below. So we're just the doors that are there now uh, and even the windows, even though it's, they're fairly new, there's some damage to them. The windows have been screwed shut things and not very operable. So that's one of the reasons we want to replace the windows and the doors. I'm open for questions. Thank you much. Uh, commission, questions, comments? Yeah, this kind of lost me at the point at which I see there's a kitchen here, and which is turning this into a residential unit, which means that it is not something that, that we have approved. Um, mm, I would say ever, but I wouldn't go so far, but I would say within the last 15 years. So to clarify uh, what Commissioner Panzer is saying is typically we we allow for a bathroom or a kitchen, but not both. I uh, can't. So like if you wanted to uh, prepare coffee, you know, those kind of things, coffee, tea, are you allowed to have? Uh, uh, what are you allowed to have? I mean, you can have a uh, coffee pot, that kind of stuff. It's just you don't get the kitchen sink, basically. Okay. Down to. I mean, it it used to be for a long time that you got two you got two plumbing fixtures. That was that was it. But that seems to have over the years morphed into allowing it for a full bath. Okay. Uh, until until not that long ago, it was it was you were limited to a half bath basically. But that was modified um, as a matter of course, probably five or six years ago, where we started letting people do. Um, guest rooms, but but not a rentable unit, which which is what this amounts to. Well, yeah, certainly they don't want to. They don't have any desire to rent. Uh, the uh, the uh, the owner, uh, she's pregnant. She likes a place for her mom to be able to sleep when she comes and del after she delivers the baby. That's kind of the reason that they're trying to get this done now. But certainly, we understand your regulations. Um, you know, I don't know if the city of Columbus either would allow us to do a rentable unit. That's not certainly the tent. And that's why we tried to call it a guest bedroom. But on again, if we could use the, the bathroom sink to for water, things like that, if we wanted to make coffee, things yep. like that. So I think what we're looking for here is and we're certainly um, I mean, so we could have I guess if you're just saying plumbing pictures of the regulation. Uh, so then we could just have a countertop and then they could have their coffee maker or whatever in in that what we call kitchen that space now. But I think if we could uh, uh, stipulate that it's not a, a, a kitchen, then that that would be fine. Yep. We, and we see that quite often. That's not out of the ordinary. But they might be able to have a mini fridge or something like that, I guess. A microwave, that's, a right. that's a piece of furniture. I mean, okay. Um, I, I would probably recommend that that to to keep life simple moving forward with building inspectors and so, that you remove the word kitchenette. Okay, if, just if you just put a counter there and it kind of is what it is. But as soon as you start calling it a kitchenette, people are gonna. I'm not sure that kitchenette exists in code. It doesn't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think it does. <laughs> So as far as the, the variance recommendations go, it looks like we're going to have to basically do a, uh, a motion on the architecture and then a motion on the variance recommendations because it's two separate actions. Uh, it looks like <clears throat> variance is required. I'm seeing on page 25 of the application, it's showing four variances. Is that what we're looking for here? We'll make sure we're making a motion on the right stuff. Looks like page 22. Are you asking? 
Are you asking me or? Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we're we're we're, we're looking for these four variances. Um, if uh, page, staff page, page twenty two, page twenty two, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if I have that in front of me as far as I know that on the drawings we we said um, allow for a habitable space in a, a garage that is not connected directly to that, which was section 3332.38H. So staff, if you can go to the application on the screen, right now we're seeing the uh, oh, okay. agenda right now only. Yeah, can you control the screen there? I'm not. Um, Belkus, are you able to hear us? Sorry, yes. You can go to application for item for agenda item 14. Oh, okay. You got to open up at the top there. Uh, two to the right, 14. Oh. There you go. And then go down to page 22, if you would. And if you zoom in on that, that's the uh, those are the four that looks like we need to make a motion on. Yeah, so the height it's already existing, so we're not changing that. But I don't know if you need to rule on that or not. We you do. We, okay, that's cool. To get okay. the one, we got to get everything kind of current and up to date for for the city, basically. So we'll so for for, for the commission, uh, H is the new one. Uh, G, E, and B, the next three bullet points are all existing conditions. Do we need to split this? I think we're going to have to split it into two separate, one for the uh, all right. recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion to, to split agenda item number 14, GV 2101026, into part A and part B. Part A being variance recommendations um, as enumerated on page 22 of the application, and part B to be the Sorry, other way around, right? We want A to be the architecture and B to be the variance recommendations. Okay. Is there a second? That makes more sense. We have a second. Second. Any questions on the motion? Well, I okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, we'll take the, the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. That motion passes. So we now have two separate applications. Uh, do we want to vote on the uh, variances first? I, or do you want to talk about the architecture first? Um, I was going to make a motion on the architecture first, but it, it it's really about this kitchenette thing that I think we need to get squared away before we, I, I think we want to make it clear that the variance recommendations are based on what we're requiring for architecture and what the owner agrees with the architecture. So I'll make um, a motion on agenda item number 14, GV 2101026A to approve the architectural design as submitted or as amended by the applicant to remove reference to um, kitchenette from the plans and to limit um, uh, to limit the plumbing fixtures and design of the house or design of the space to have three, no more than three plumbing fixtures um, in a um, in a full bath. There's a second. Second. Any questions on the motion? All right, take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda number, number 14, G, application GV 2101026B, to recommend the following variances sections 3332.38H, 3332.38H, 
3332.33J, 3332.26E, 3332.25B. And I'm noting that um, only the first variance uh, pertains to any alterations to the existing conditions and that the latter three are only to allow the property to conform to the existing conditions. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Appearances are recommended. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We will move forward to item 15. Uh, real quick, it's past six o'clock, staff. Are you guys still, folks still good to continue on? I'm okay. Nolan and Belkis, are you okay? Yeah, right. I'm okay. Commissioners, everybody good still? Yes. Lack of nose. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, item 15, uh, GV-21-01-027, 757 City Park Avenue. Looking for Judith Politi. Politi? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. Uh, heard your voice. I'm looking for your face. There's your face. Please raise your right hand, please. And Brenda Hi. Parker, the architect's also on. Yeah, Brenda's here too. Okay. Uh, if you'd both please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. And then Ms. Politi, if you'd please state your name for the record. Judy Politi. Okay. And Ms. Parker, if you please state your name for the record. Brenda Parker. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application was previously seen as a conceptual at the December 1st uh, German Village Commission hearing. And so the application is to construct a two-story addition to an existing one and a half story house. And the feedback given at that December meeting included that the new construction will likely require variances and possibly existing addition variances. And so preliminary feedback uh, should be sought. Uh, roof lines typically should be separated. Uh, the applicant may consider what other homes have done regarding extrusions and additions, uh, and that they have been offset by about six inches to let the existing roof visually end before the new roof begins. The applicant may consider having a contemporary flat roof, and that commissioners noted that currently a lot of distance uh, is located between the top of the windows and the eave lines. All right, uh, for the applicants, anything else to add? So I think since the conceptual design last month, we have um, gone back and, and simplified the design of the addition. So um, the goal for the addition was to get some taller ceiling heights. Um, and so we're, we're setting the roof a couple feet above the existing roof so that the existing roof can kind of die into our new wall and then they can be completely separate. I think before we had kind of some um, roof overlays and some cricketing happening on the existing roof. So they're completely independent. Um, we are proposing a vertical board and batten siding. Um, with the flat roof again, because it's only a story and a half volume, um, we didn't want kind of a massive volume happening behind it. So the flat roof allows it to kind of be as discreet as possible. Um, we are, it is set back on the north side, um, 18 inches from the existing house, and it is set over part of a single story um, portion at the rear. And then we are protruding out in front or beyond the side on the south side by one foot four inches. You can kind of see that on the east elevation and the plans. Um, the project is also looking for approval for a new brick wall um, in the site separating the north property from this property. That's on the site plan. 
And there are also six variances being requested. Four are just for existing conditions and two are for the addition. One is a lot coverage and the other one is a total side yard um, dimension. I think that's it. All right, questions, comments from the commission. I'm sorry, I was on mute inadvertently. What's the lot coverage issue? So they um, they count the covered porch areas as part of the lot coverage, you know, the building coverage. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are over by 50, we're 54% and the allowable is 50%. If we didn't count those covered porch areas, it would be compliant. So it's the 20, 20 by 3, 6 at the back and the 13, 8 by 8, 2 at the front. Yeah. Only one of those is an existing condition, though, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And the upstairs there above the covered porch is habitable area, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes it a little different than if it were just a porch. I think, and I think it could probably be redesigned to not have that. It just, um, this was just kind of a simpler elevation than the whole thing, stepping back and not having that overhang. Let me let me digress to something else to something else, which is just easier. And that is that the while I understand that there might be a six foot eight existing brick wall, um, I'm willing to bet that it was it either wasn't approved or that it was approved on a side where it was or was only approved at six feet, not six feet eight. Oh, okay. I'm not um, sure. Um, I didn't measure the height of this wall. I just made an assumption that the existing brick wall was six foot eight. So yeah, I I'm it, it, I it's only supposed it to be down. six feet. We can have it lowered. Yeah. Yeah, our gu guidelines are six feet above grade. Okay. <clears throat> This is Ned. I, I was not here for the conceptual review of this, and I'm because of that, I'm kind of reluctant to comment because I don't know what was said. But to me, this addition does not seem to be subservient to the original cottage. It doesn't seem to recognize the fact that its roof should be lower than the ridge of the existing cottage, which granted we've gone beyond that in other places. But this really looks to me like something that's wagging the cottage. Um, it is so dominant, so alien to the architecture of the village um, that I, I don't know how we got this far. I mean, get, getting the roof that far above the ridge 
really presents presents a problem. So I think this goes the, with the story and a half cottage, that second story space at the cottage is, is barely habitable. Um, and so, you know, with the addition, the owner wants to make sure she has a, a decent amount of height, a normal amount of height to work with. So this is not a story and a half cottage. This is a one story cottage with a inhabitable attic, which a lot of people in the village live with. Well, I, I've got a question. My first, my first question is, uh, is the floor elevation of the addition the same as the floor elevation of the story and a half or the... The oh, first floor attic. elevations align. The second floor elevations do not align. So you've stepped up. You've stepped the second. I think, Judy, what's your first floor ceiling height in the cottage? In the cottage, it's 10 feet. Okay, so they do align. Mm -hmm. The second floor is align. And the first floor. And what's the ceiling height show, uh, that's shown on the currently in the addition? Nine feet at the second floor, 10 feet at the first floor. And how much over the roof line, the peak, does the addition go? Uh, I can give you an exact dimension. One foot 11. At least on the south elevation, it looks like it's 111 and. Yeah. Yeah, 11 and a half. Now it's going to take a better architect than me to figure this out. Well, that's why we tried to just, if we just did a simple box that would didn't try to relate, it didn't try to be story and a half, it was just its own element, um, wasn't competing or trying to do the same thing, that maybe that was our best bet. The, the problem that I'm having, and, uh, and, and I think that, well, I don't want to go, go into how we got here, but that, you know, the, the, the thought was that with an elevation, you know, with the, um, the with a flat roof coming in at the peak of the existing cottage, that the triangles, if you will, become pretty minimal and um, and and would, you know, the one on the uh, south side would. would almost entirely be obscured by the existing dormer and the one on the uh, north side is so close to the um, so close to the the building to the north that it too would would kind of recede into the background there but I think once this thing went up two feet above the ridge that theory of of allowing it you know of in effect hiding it behind, the cottage just gets blown out of the water. So if you think that, so if we got two feet out of the height, whether maybe we drop the first floor down closer to grade or we reduce the structure depth, that if we could get it to align with that ridge, you guys would be, it would be acceptable? I, I'm, I'm thinking that I would find it acceptable. Okay. But I'd also thinking that I would need to see it, and, well, and sure. I'm one person, so. And I and I don't think that's what the guidelines say. And I think you say to tuck it under it. It just it's a story to half houses are really difficult to have make a two story addition. 
Well, I'm going to point out maybe a story and a half is your error. Yep. Well. <laughs> well, we certainly have many circumstances where we have additions that come very close to or even are slightly over the height of a house. But it really depends on what the views are. For, for me, it depends on what, what the visual impact of it is. Um, I, have this, I have this memory that we did talk about a connector to visually separate the addition from the original cottage, which would push the height of the addition this tallest point further to the back and not have it like an obvious comparison right up against the historic ridge. If I remember that conversation correctly, I think what it came down to is right now, if you look at the floor plans um, compared to the existing structure, it's this addition is kind of going on top of an existing one story quote unquote addition off the back of it. And by pushing as a connector, there's some architecture that needs to be worked out of how you make all that ridge lines and everything connect with the old addition being kind of taken over by the new addition. And I think Judy, didn't didn't you find precedent? You have precedent in the village of I do. Yeah. Actually right next door. <clears throat> It was a cottage that they did a two-story addition. And um, I mean, it's got the same siding. It's right next door. It's to the south. So I like the, these 2D elevations. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't get the perspective from, from being at grade i i don't know and it's so this addition is so close to the other neighboring structures there is no way that anyone is going to be able to see the difference in roof height we have the google images too from the street and i mean it, it really is close to the north um so close to the north side that you honestly you you'd have to walk down like the walkway to in order to see it. Yeah, it's the last it's the last shot that gives me pause. The view seven. Mm, sorry, it's on page 14. Oh, sorry. Let me look at it. Yeah, it's that one. I don't know what a connect. I, this, uh, Teresa, is, this is up above the car, though. Like I'm looking way over top of. Well, I'm assuming it's someone stand. Well, if this is from Google Maps, then it's some it's head height because it's taken from the roof of a car. Yeah. Um, and and it, it isn't even across the street. It's it's in the street. If it if it's I mean as it appears to be Google Maps, the 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 one th this is is the the view that that makes me cringe when with something that's higher than the ridge if you know again if it if it's down at at ridge height and by the way what would be really useful here would be to know what the eve height of the adjacent property is um to the north or the, the south that, Jay. pardon me to the north or the south which one um sorry to the right on this drawing uh, to the right on this photograph oh, okay i mean the other the eve height on the to the one on on the left that one we know we're, we're way above but the, on that side you're largely obscured by the um by the dormer on that exists and the addition to this to the south to the left on that it is the same height in the front as mine, and it's a two-story addition right next door. Same thing.
So I have ask an additional question, which I don't believe is actually necessarily part of the guidelines, but this structure would cover all the windows on the adjacent house. And if we're looking at the side yard variants, then they have all those window openings. So we're, we're three feet away from the property line. Okay. So we're compliant with building code. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I seem to remember that we talked about a connector. I, my memory is, seems similar to Teresa's. Yeah, I think the, the discussion went a lot of different ways. One was a flat roof option that maybe, one was kind of a dormer concept, one was a flat roof concept, and one was a hyphen concept. And I think the direction we chose to go in order to maintain the floor plan was the flat roof concept. Yeah, I think the issue is though with the flat roof concept and the height that you have is just the dominance of the addition over the existing historic structure. Just just speaking of the mass. Right, but there is a lot of precedent in the village for doing this. I mean, it, I, I think initially we came with a kind of a hip roof. Anyway, we tried to make it as subtle as we could, but there's a lot of precedent in the village for it. There is. It's right next door. Well, and depending, you know, depending on when that was done, it, it mm -hmm. you know, in all likelihood predates, just looking at the siding material, it predates the, um, well, you don't know that for sure, but it probably predates the uh, current guidelines. There's one across the street, exactly the same. I mean, they're, they're all up and down City Park. Well, I, I think I'm I may well be in the minority here, but I, I think that if the roof were two feet lower, if the roof did not extend above the, the ridge line, I I would grudgingly accept it. However, the lot coverage thing has got me kind of flummoxed. Um I'm usually extraordinarily not usually, I'm always extraordinarily conservative in terms of uh, in terms of lot coverage. Um, I know that that covered porches are considered part of um, are part of the coverage, but I think that it's a, a different circumstance when there's habitable space above um, above a covered porch, because well, it, it's just different than if you have a covered porch with a balcony above. And I I'm usually you know grudging about a point or two. Um, I don't recall having um, gone to 4% without, without some weird extenuating circumstances. Just a little, I pulled up the application from, from last month and what was there, it was HIPAA previously hit the roof previously. We had talked about the, the flat roof concepts in lieu of the hip roof to kind of keep things down. But the concept shows that the ridge that hip roof, I mean, inches above the ridge line of the property. So somehow we got from almost level to almost two feet above. And I'm not sure how that happened. If the flat roof was intended to kind of keep everything down. So the, I think the original scheme had dropped the floor level, the first floor level, so kind of shifted everything down. Mm -hmm. However, we we wouldn't meet the eight in, the keep. We try to keep the wood eight inches above the ground per code, um, and so I lifted it back up so that I could keep that wood eight inches off the ground. That's that. That's the discrepancy.
Plus, I think their original house, I'm not sure if it was field measured. This is all field verified, all the heights and yeah. um, dimensions. The only point I'm making is, is some of the, the conversations we had last month were under a different set of assumptions. I think some of the assumptions have now changed, which is what's leading to what we're seeing now. And that's why I think it's a shock to some of us of, of what we're seeing was not quite what we expected to see after the conversation we had last month. So I'm not saying it's good, bad, and different. It's just, it's something a little bit different. And I'm trying to understand why it looks so visually different from what we discussed. I think that's, that's what's driving it, honestly. So it sounds like we're back to, we're either dropping the roof to align with the ridge height at a minimum, or we're going to a hyphen concept. And I'll just and throw some more some more information in here. If I remember correctly, commissioners remind me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I remember having conversations about these style additions in the past, trying to put a two story onto a, a story and a half cottage. Um in kind of the give and take that comes into that conversation is when you start doing the hyphen you're kind of restricting floor area and so the hyphen the, the connector concept tends to open up the, the avenue into um i'll say lock coverage is over 50 percent to a certain extent nothing egregious but to have no connector and all this kind of together what i'll call choo-choo style and be over 50 percent it's kind of like there, there's nothing given it just seems to be too much for what's here and if i'm totally off base with those statements please somebody else speak up now anthony i i think that you are um relating the concerns additionally um the the addition is not supposed to Eat the existing historic structure and size. And so all of this additional square foot is square footage is larger than the existing house for these, um, the square footage noted on the drawings. And then, you know, it also requires the variance for lot coverage. One of the things that that um, the the guideline revision did address, and 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 I think it's just worth considering here. I don't I don't think that it that it responds to to some of the things, or I don't think it solves the problems. But it does talk particularly about the difficulty of additions to cottages and to to small cottages, and and that. The uh, some of the strictures that are that are put on uh, on typical additions or or additions to larger structures um, need to be addressed differently with the 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 smaller structures and it kind of acknowledges the fact that 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 dealing with these small additions to these small cottages is kind of a different thing that needs to be handled a little bit differently than than typical. The the connector issue, I, I think, um, works really well when you're trying to uh, in in several circumstances where you're trying to to create a visual separation. Given the nature of this lot and where this addition is, putting a, putting a connector in there, I don't I don't think is really going to do anything visually because you'll never see where where it engages. Um, but I, I think that the the problem of how you make an addition engage, regardless of whether there's a connector or not, is is to me where the the real struggle here is. Um, and I don't think I, I don't think it's there. The the lot coverage issue is a separate issue from the issue of of additions to cottages. Lot lot coverage is lot coverage. Um, and as I say, there, there have been very, very few circumstances where, where I've been willing to go over a couple of points. Um, and, and this is kind of hitting the cringe zone on that. 
just a, two more comments. Um, the, 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 the comment about the property to the south versus this property as kind of a precedent. Uh, looking at the Google Street View, it looks like the property to the south might be a little bit taller, uh, which may be kind of hiding some of what the concerns are on, on what's happening on this property. Um, and also, if you go back into the history of it, uh, 2014 photos appears to have showing construction happening on that south property. So for the applicant, if you want to work with Jacqueline, you might be able to get the application for that property from the 2013 to 2014 timeline and see what they did there. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's a difficult situation. <laughs> These sort of halves are a little problematic for trying to put additions onto it. So Judith, do you want to have do you want to continue the application to next month? I don't I don't I think we're gonna have to, aren't we? But I would like to get some sort of resolution as to where we're gonna go with it and some sort of direction before we come back again with this. So if we come back and we reduce it by four percent somehow and we drop the roof line somehow. That's what you're looking for. I'll say that's that's the minimum change needs to happen, in my opinion. So those are, those are the two things that you're looking for, basically. For me, yes, Ned. I know you had some concerns. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, but it's it's more than just dropping the roof, and it's more than just reducing the floor plan. It's appropriate solutions that provide guidance, follow the guidance and the guidelines to get there. So if you come back and say, hey, we dropped it a foot, are we good to go? No. Okay, so Ned, what would be your direction on this? My, my direction is read the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And what about the precedent throughout the, the village, if we came back with those? I, I don't consider other properties, and we stated this before, precedents for another project. Okay. That's that's why we have to have that's why we have to follow the guidelines. Otherwise, every other house, every other house in the village that has something screwy on it becomes the guidelines instead of the guidelines that were drafted and approved by uh, the city. Brenda? Yeah. I think we, we just have to continue it and then we have to determine what, you know, we'll go back and revisit the guidelines and determine what direction we think we need to take in order to meet the guidelines. Then that's what we'll do. All right. Uh, if there's no more questions or comments, is there a motion for continuance? So moved. Second. Any question on the motion? Mr. Panzer? Aye. Mr. Durst? Aye. Mr. Thiel? Aye. Mr. Ferriel? Aye. Mr. McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right. Uh, on to item 16, GB-21-01-028, conceptual. Uh, 122 South Pearl Street. We have uh, Dr. Pitko or Representative Jim Tetson. So um, I'm here representing Dr. Kvitko. I was the real estate agent on the deal. All righty. If you would uh, please raise your right hand. My name is Perry swear, Billy, by the way. <laughs> right, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record. My name is Perry Dilley, and I was the real estate agent on both ends of the transaction through the seller and the buyer. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this application is conceptual, and it is uh, proposing to add a driveway to the south side or right side of the home. 
Uh, per the applicant, the home previously had a driveway on the side that was removed several years ago. Uh, they would like to add a new one car garage at the rear to be constructed of wood with wood siding to match the existing siding on the home. Uh, the project would require a curb cut. Uh, the applicant notes that the home previously had a garage at the rear and has submitted uh, an additional photo in response to commissioner feedback showing a older photo with a curb cut. Yeah, and as you can see, the backyard is mostly concrete as is. And there it is. That's the photo. Uh, the applicant, anything else to add? Uh, not this time. Commissioners, questions, comments? Lucky photo. Yeah, no, they, they went through some yeah old family photos to find anything that and we do have one picture of the, the actual garage, um, but it doesn't really show the house or anything in it. So I didn't really think that it was it was great evidence, but the original garage was all wood um, and it had a barn sliding door on it. It would have been before electric garage doors and stuff like that, but it had a sliding barn um, door on it and it was all wood. What's the distance to the property line? I actually do not know that off the top of my head. And the original driveway um, was, you know, it was two individual um, lanes of concrete with a grass strip um, down the middle. How do you how do you know that? Um, from the description of the previous owner, um, it was actually in her family for 75 years, um, oh. transferred a few times through the family, but she grew up in the house herself. So she saw all the transfers and they actually have, they, they did say if you needed signatures, um, they have members that were willing to advocate that it was there. I, I guess the question and what the question becomes is, did it straddle the property line? Did the driveway straddle the property line? It, it's, it's a little tough to tell. And, if you, if you look and at the uh, Google Street View, you can see in the curb, the curb goes from stone to concrete at an angle. Yeah. Yes, that's probably the original extent, which is right at the property mm -hmm. line. Okay. And then, so this home also faces um, the vacant, um, uh, what was it? Um, Long John Silver um, and apartment complexes and High Street. So it's not really in the village. It's actually the second to last house in the village. Um, that, in that's in the village. village. Yeah, it's it is. Not really in the village? <laughs> it is. It, it's at the edge of the village. It's the second house. In. So it's in the village. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's not get into the edge of the village again. Okay. <laughs> I would say one thing you need to look at uh, when you're when they're pursuing this um, is again the, the the distance from the the building to the property line. It looks like there's a, an iron fence right down the property line uh, between the two different properties. So if you can actually fit a, a, a driveway through there now, currently for current car standards versus not, I know there's some drive requirements with requirements and for code and everything else. It's Ten feet wide is the city of Columbus's requirement for a driveway. <laughs> Just, just eyeballing. I'm not sure you got ten feet there, but that's just from my right. perspective. Why? Why did they ever let go of the driveway? That's what I want to know. I asked the same thing. I, I have. I, they decided to plant two fig trees and have um, a little green grass area on the side, but the the backyard is actually quite large for the property. Yeah. Um. And and most of the concrete's been left in, and they actually want to tear most of it out and replace it all with grass on the left, so you would only have. Um, and they're, they're fine with doing brick as well um, to the back. Um, the front of the house has all concrete um, and everything else is brick in the area and it should be. And you can see in this picture, even way back when it was concrete going into brick. Yeah. So actually the new owner would prefer to have it all done with brick to go back. Dr. Klitko. We like that. Yeah, he figured he would. <laughs> all right. 
Same plan. I guess the, the big question is, is there 10 feet there? Okay. So as a conceptual standpoint, um, really the big thing for him is just, you know, getting the curb cut before he gets an architecture and to build the garage, it would be a very basic, simple, um, you know, whatever matches the area. But really he's wanting to know basically if, if the curb cut would even be acceptable. Um, and then if, you know, that would be determined on the 10 feet or, or whatnot. Hey, Teresa. Yeah. Question. I mean, it's 10 feet's the code, but can you get an exception to that? Probably. I, I just know when I try to divide my driveway, that's what they told me. Yeah. I think they could almost make a case that if they can prove that there was a driveway here, it wasn't code at that time make a case for going back in with a narrow one. And I would say also on the, applica on the application, um, take photos of that curb because you can see the stones on both sides and the section that was the drive is concrete. So it's kind of clear as day where that was at. Yeah, don't lose that picture. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then that's all we got. Any other information you need from us? Uh, that I need. Yep. Feedback from us. Um, Exceptional. Uh, does that mean that you guys would be willing to approve it further on if he got more designs in, and that it would be worth you know taking the time to plan out the driveway and the garage? I would say you have the evidence that you would that we would typically be looking for to allow a curb cut, and that is that photo showing a curb cut there existing. And the next step is can can it work with code, and will it can right. it be constructed correctly? And then okay, the next step is is the garage application to, to build the garage structure itself. We don't really have any design to look at. Uh, typically, right, we're right. looking for if you're on earlier, we there's conversations about appropriate doors yeah, and that know. kind of stuff. And, <laughs> I did hear yeah. that. That was interesting. All right, so um, I'll give it back. So is this a continuance then, or do we file a new application that's not conceptual? Um, we don't take any action on conceptuals. So okay. we just uh, apply again to the next, we're ready to apply for the next step. Okay, Good perfect. Time. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you much. Excuse me. Yes. Can I yeah. add one last note? It looks like there's a large existing tree in the backyard. And so also in that planning, you want to look at, is it possible to construct a garage without impacting it? Okay. So you guys would prefer to have the tree in place if possible? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I will make sure that the buyer knows that. I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Move on to item 17, GV-21-01-029. 637 South 3rd Street. I believe I saw Mr. Barnes on the call. Yep. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Can you see me? Uh, we can see you. You can? Yes. All right. Great. Can you see Jenny? Jenny as well. Excellent. Uh, uh, please raise your right hands. Just ready to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do yes, know. I do. Put your left hand. Put your left hand, Jenny. <laughs> All right, please take the the record, please. Uh, Jonathan Barnes. Jenny Barnes. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this uh, application is proposing to allow a habitable space above a garage with reduced development standards and R2F residential district. Uh, the applicant would like to construct a new detached 686 square foot two car garage with occupied studio slash office space above and that is to replace a previously demolished outbuilding the new driveway would be installed utilizing an existing curb cut and the applicant would be submitting final details for a future commission meeting so at the december 22nd business meeting commissioners requested to see the book loft building included in drawings or renderings to understand the relationship of the structures and massing uh, and the site plan to understand the proposed work in context with the neighboring buildings and ask whether additional variances such as proximity for rear and side yard and side yard setback will be required. The applicant has submitted an additional section drawing and confirmed that they have received preliminary feedback from zoning. All right. The applicants, anything else to add? Um, not too much. Um, I agree with all that. 
Um, we did get uh, confirmation from zoning on the variances, which are all of two. Um, as um, Jacqueline mentioned, the the height and uh, actually it's the it's the fact that the habitable space is not directly connected to have in the garage is not directly connected to habitable space in the house, which we wouldn't want anyway, and I don't think you would either. Um, and then the height, um, I wanna make sure we understand that the height of the garage is actually, um, we're looking at 17 and a half feet, um, not 20 some, I think that was maybe what was in the notes. Um, so it's 17 and a half feet um, because the, the, the height is taken from the grade um, from the rear of the property. And then we, we're sloping up, right? So the garage uh, at the rear is actually, I guess, sunk, sunken, right? From that rear um, elevation. That's in intentional to get it as low as possible. So we're actually about uh, six feet below the, the, height, the height of the house. And we're also, I think about the same, if not more below uh, the book loft. I honestly don't know exactly the height of that book loft, um, the top of the roof, but we're below both. I think your page nine kind of shows that pretty well. That cuts that. Exactly. I appreciate that. Exactly. So that's really the addition to the presentation from the last meeting is this section uh, information and drawing. So our intention is to move ahead to a uh, uh, final review where we can come back with uh, more uh, precise uh, descriptions of materials and such. But I'm interested to hear any comments. Questions, comments from the commission, particularly those who are not in attendance last month. It would be great to have your input. <laughs> I was there last month, but I, what I would say is is that that this um, I think does a great job of of answering my concern, and and that is that um, when you look up that drive the existing driveway, um, the and, and then you think about a two story structure being built on top of grade back there, you know you go oh my god it it's going to tower over everything, not realizing that you're that you're um, in effect, digging it into the hill, um, and I think that you're you're only going to wind up uh, a foot above the sidewalk uh, with the floor of the garage, if I'm not mistaken, I'm from the drawings. Yep. No, I can yeah. say the house is the house structure is so elevated too. Uh, Correct. I find the box kind of different, but I think it works. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea is that I think the, the our reference, you know, just to kind of be clear about our intent is for this to look, you know, more more like a utilitarian structure, not another house. So there's more contrast and less height, obviously. Um, I think we've seen those. Gosh, you know, it's hard to find them anymore. But, um, you know, I'm sure if you hunted around, you could still find those this kind of um, this kind of structure, kind of an outbuilding. Um, oftentimes, it's kind of got the larger like glazed utility block or brick um anyway just kind of looking more like a, a, a sort of secondary utilitarian building rather than like another house uh, oh, good. how's the uh, neighbor <coughs> behind uh i don't know if you've talked to them about potentially blocking their view or you screening them from the street you know they don't really have a view because that's pretty highly vegetated back there um for sure, and they're actually even further, they have a, a, pretty, a pretty sizable backyard. Um, so it's not like we're gonna be really kind of reducing their view much, I mean. Okay. So you're not right up against them? No, no. And, and to your comment about the utilitarian structure, you're dead on uh, the word I, wording I was gonna use in uh, agenda item four on this meeting, which the applicant was not there for when we called the their application. Basically, it's a, a rectangular utilitarian structure, uh, almost flattish roof. Um, so it's kind of right in line with, with that. It's interesting to see that uh, a new version of that, basically. Yeah, exactly. 
I'm good. Yeah. I like it. Okay. All right. Any more information you need from us? Uh, no. So we're going to, as I mentioned, we'll be back um, next month uh, with, uh, you know, kind of a full materials palette um, and everything else that's missing and, you know, more, more detail in the landscaping as well. So we'll be coming back, be coming back for a full review. Great. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So wrapping up uh, previous business, uh, agenda item four. Do we have any applicants here for 1054 South Pearl Street? Uh, we do not. Is there an or a motion to continue item number four? So moved. Second. Second. Any question on the motion? No. All right. <laughs> Commissioner Panzer? Yes, aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. I will figure out for next meeting a way to do a, uh, a unanimous vote. <laughs> uh, item number 12. Uh, do we have applicants here for 180 Thurman Avenue? The columns on the front porch. Uh, Jack, any word back from that applicant at all? Um, I have heard from the applicant. Uh, they were just had some questions about the columns, and they were doing some trying to do some research. So I have included um, some information that they had found. Uh, but basically, I just wanted to explain if they were able to attend the meeting. Uh, why would we, you know, request a different type of column? Because they had seen you know, free classic subtype of Queen Anne style, you know, those that subtype tends to have classical columns and things. So it's basically just explaining further why we wouldn't want to see those classical type of columns on this structure and that they would want to relate to those, you know, turn spindle pilasters and other details um, that are not classical on this particular house. I mean, this is an incredible no-brainer in terms of what kind of columns should be on that porch. I mean, yeah, I think they should match those pilasters, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's like, do that. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just, yeah, really dive back to the applicant maybe a little bit more clearly. But they were trying to, you know, just look into it. And I think the fact that the existing columns are different and don't match that was throwing them off as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I would also relate to that 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 having that detail of a column would indicate a lot more ornamentation of the detailing around the porch, which doesn't exist. So kind of, they're kind of picking and choosing what they want to put on detail wise, either going to kind of go all in or, or none. So I think what's existing is what's driving that one. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to continue at 12? So moved. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Last half motion passes. Uh, last item on the end of the agenda, old business, uh, 788 Mohawk Street. I have not checked it out myself personally. I'm, I'm meeting here today this week. Um, has anybody had a chance to stop by 788 Mohawk Street and take a look at the windows installed? No. Yeah. Make the request if you please all take a chance to do that here before our next meeting. Put that one to bed. And if there's nothing else, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any questions on the motion? Commissioner oh. Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Good it. Happy night, New Year. everyone. Bye. Happy New Year. Hey Anthony, the way I think you can do I think the way you can do unanimous is without objection. There we go.